all done. Leave me. Go on. I am not leaving you behind, man. If you guys don't quit it, I'm going to miss my massage. Get off me. Come on, guys. Sledding, the train tours, and the rock wall, it hits you. This is way more than a cruise. See for yourself at RoyalCaribbean.com and get out there. It's got more glass than a hall of mirrors, more views than any other ship its size, and enough excitement to keep you entertained for days on end. It's Royal Caribbean's Radiance of the Seas, and we're hopping on board to cruise Alaska's inside passage. We'll take you inside the staterooms, onto the bridge, around the decks, and into the galleys to uncover what makes this 90,000 ton marvel run. We'll hop off to explore some of Alaska's most breathtaking sights. All aboard! We'll continue the journey into Alaska's interior aboard Royal Caribbean's Wilderness Express. We'll discover what it takes to run this one-track wonder and get a first-hand look at where the wild things are. So grab your suitcase and your sea legs and join Royal Caribbean's journey to Alaska. Rising 13 decks above sea level, Radiance of the Seas is a colossal vessel. Measuring 105 feet across, 962 feet long, and weighing in at over 90,000 tons. She accommodates 2,500 passengers plus crew. And on this mega ship, you don't have to go far to find a view. Half the vessel's exterior is glass, including six panoramic elevators. There's also the Centrum, a glass-domed atrium that rises nine decks through the middle of the ship. Radiance is the ship of light. Everywhere you look, there's glass, there's light, there's sweeping vistas of the ocean. It's the perfect ship for Alaska because everywhere you go, you're in touch with the ocean, you're in touch with the scenery. As cruisers embark on a seven-day adventure to Alaska, the first stop is the check-in, where each passenger receives a key to all the pleasures that await on board. It's called a sea pass, and it acts as a charge card and stateroom key all in one. How are you doing tonight? As passengers check in, down below, dock workers are busy packing Radiance's cargo deck with tons of food and supplies for the week-long journey. They're loading her up with 12,500 pounds of fresh vegetables, 785 gallons of ice cream, more than 2,700 bottles of champagne, 250 cases of bottled water, and 6,000 pounds of flour. With all passengers and supplies on board, it's time for Radiance of the Seas to set sail. Bye. Starting out in Vancouver, Canada, cruisers will travel through Southeast Alaska's Inside Passage a narrow waterway 400 miles long. Stopping at three ports of call, this cruise will cover a total distance of 2,205 nautical miles. A cruise really is the best way to see Alaska because of the fact that so much of Alaska is isolated. It's not a sun and fun destination. It's a destination that's about seeing the unspoiled frontier that is Alaska. Apart from enjoying the scenery, 
there's still tons to do on this luxury liner. You can catch a flick at the cinema, surf the net, and even stay in shape at the 15,500 square foot Ship Shape Center. Whether you run, lift weights, or take part in dozens of classes offered each week, you can sweat it out here without missing a moment of Alaska's beautiful scenery. But radiance of the sea's hottest spot is this tropical paradise, the Solarium. Located on Deck 11, it's the ship's most popular watering hole. It's a jungle in here, complete with three life-size elephants, a waterfall, and over 400 plants. And the temperature's always a toasty 78 degrees. Radiance of the Seas caters to a relaxed crowd of outdoor lovers. So if you want to take it outside, you can scale the ship's 30-foot rock climbing wall or putt around on the nine-hole golf course. But safety comes first on this ship. Excuse me, can you put your life jacket on, please? So before the fun really gets going, passengers participate in a mandatory emergency drill. Make sure all the cabins are empty. That's correct. Excellent, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Jolly good. All cruisers must gather in designated stations around the 18 lifeboats that line the ship's fifth deck. It's a good representation of where they should go in an emergency, where they should uh, go to their assembly stations, their muster stations. At their assigned stations, passengers are shown evacuation techniques. How are we doing, folks? Great. Very well. It's also an opportunity for the crew to test out their emergency skills. You should be very vocal. You should be saying, put your life jackets on. You understand why? On this ship, safety's no joke, but the man everyone relies on to steer clear of danger is the captain, Tor Torovesa. Let him just turn. It's his job to pilot this massive vessel, but navigating through Alaska's inside passage is nothing like sailing on the high seas. You navigate in more narrow waters. You navigate in fog. You navigate in conditions that can be quite challenging. Alaska's Inside Passage is an archipelago of islands and towering mountains carved out by glaciers more than 15,000 years ago. It's also filled with icebergs, making the captain's most daunting challenge, avoiding breaking the ice. When I'm turning the ship, it is very, very important that we are not getting ice into the propellers. Have we passed it? The ship's propellers are extremely sensitive. One nudge by an iceberg could cause severe damage. Amazingly enough, the captain can steer the entire ship effectively with this little joystick. But up here on the bridge, the ship's 4,000 square foot control center, the majority of the navigation is actually controlled by computers. And just in case of computer error, the officers on duty ensure a safe journey by plotting the course by hand on this low-tech paper map. And round the clock, Two officers are positioned on the bridge to supervise the computers and scan the horizon for objects that may not show up on the radar. With all eyes on deck, the captain navigates radiance of the seas into her first port of call, the state capital of Alaska. Hi everybody, welcome to Juneau, we're here! Yay! The city of Juneau is set in the beautiful Tongass National Forest. With just over 30,000 residents, it is a small town in terms of population but it's actually the biggest town in North America. At a staggering 3,248 square miles, Juneau is twice the size of the state of Rhode Island. One reason for its massive size is this glacier. It's one of Alaska's many natural wonders. 1.5 miles across and hundreds of feet thick, Mindenhall Glacier is an arresting 1,500 square miles of ice and snow. And if passengers start to feel the chill, they may want to head to town to warm up and see the sights. I'd like to walk you all to the Alaskan Brewing Company. This brewery produces up to 90,000 barrels of beer a year, and it's the largest brewing company in the state. Alaskans prefer full-bodied beers, something that gives you in, something in your stomach, something warming, partly because of our weather and climate. It has a little bit to do with that. So our Amber is the best-selling beer on tap here in the state of Alaska. Alaskan Amber Ale makes up 80% of production on site, and it's actually based on an old Gold Rush recipe. But this brewery's not Juno's only connection to the state's Gold Rush past. 
the Red Dog Saloon is the most popular bar in town. It's been in existence since the late 1800s, and it's dedicated to America's prospectors and miners who struck gold here at the turn of the century. One step through these doors is a step back in time. Over the years, uh, many, many miners have enjoyed the presence and ambience of the Red Dog. Uh, we have uh, many uh, components of the mine in here, as a matter of fact. This is an 18-foot ceiling, and we have a lot of things, such as the bear chasing a fellow through the pole there. With sawdust on the floor, old photos, and countless animal trophies, you know you're definitely in for a wild time. When passengers get their fill of the 19th century, their luxury cruise liner awaits, and so do the good times. The Radiance of the Seas has 12 bars, including the popular champagne bar where guests can dress up, sip some bubbly, and dig into the scrumptious chocolate-covered strawberries. And at the Centrum Bar, bartender Wayan Sudarta serves up all the crew's favorites. For Wayan, service is never complete without evoking a few oohs and ahs. But now look at the card at your hand. This must be your card. Oh. Ah! Wayan keeps his customers happy with a little magic, not to mention a well-stocked bar. And on deck six, the Colony Club offers up its own bit of magic. At this bar, you can rack them up with the cruise industry first, self-leveling pool tables. These innovative billiard tables are controlled by computers that automatically adjust to the sway of the vessel. So if you miss your shot, don't blame the ship. If you'd rather skip the games and settle in with a glass of wine, you won't be disappointed by the selection. Radiance of the Seas boasts 10,000 bottles of reds and whites and its very own cellar master with a nose for the very best. Nice smell. Normally what a winemaker tells you, you chew the wine. The wine goes all over your tongue. As we know, we have a lot of taste buds. We can denote the wine whether it's a, the wine is a full body or wine is medium or dry or sweet or the hint of chocolate or a hint of tobacco. With so many bottles to choose from, a cruise may be the perfect opportunity to sharpen your taste buds. From the wide Alaskan vistas to the toasty tropics, this floating fun park is full of surprises. But as we head north through the inside passage, on board and on land, the adventure is just beginning. It's day four of smooth sailing through Alaska's inside passage. So far, Radiance of the Seas has covered 800 nautical miles, hitting top speeds of 25 knots. And she's just a few miles outside of Skagway, her next port of call. On board, it's early morning. Some passengers have already hit the decks to catch a glimpse of a humpback. Or eagle. But others need a little help just getting out of bed. Here at Books, Books and Coffee, passengers can sail the open seas while sipping their favorite coffee concoction. Hello, buongiorno, how are you? Gourmet waiter Giuseppe Campagna whips up to 300 drinks a day. We'll have a uh, latte. Latte, Thank you. The most popular is his cafe latte. But keeping track of passengers' orders isn't always easy, especially when you're used to Italian simplicity. If we do it in Italy, they, I mean, guests don't ask. They will never come and ask you 2% milk with uh, vanilla flavor and uh, whipped cream on the top, all this. Uh, in Italy, they just come, ask for a coffee, and you make an espresso for them. Would you like some chocolate powder? While passengers wake up slowly to a cup of joe and some spectacular sights, down below, the action is already brewing. On deck two is the ship's control room. This is the nerve center of the ship, where all technical and mechanical operations are monitored. Yeah, we got the captain, uh, chief engineer. From the turbines to the propellers, it's the chief engineer's job to make sure all the ship's systems are operational. I look at uh, the level in my tanks, I see how much fuel I have, see where we are at the itinerary. We basically have eight monitors in here where we can get pictures of every system on the whole ship. To pull its 90,000 tons through the water and power up its 13 decks, Radiance of the Seas needs all the energy it can get. That's why the ship also has its very own power plant. One steam and two gas turbine generators produce 59 megawatts of energy, enough to power a small city. This is one of our gas turbines. 
but it's really amazing that this this thing is producing 34,000 horsepower. Now look at the size. As the ship's engineers keep all systems running, back on deck, it's almost time for lunch and cruisers gather in the impressive two-level dining room or at one of the ship's five restaurants. Meanwhile, down in the kitchen, things are just heating up. We can add some more white wine, we can add a little bit. Each of the kitchen's seven galleys is divided into different stations for soup, vegetables, meat, pasta, and pastry. Executive chef Karsten Lang keeps an eye on the 96 cooks who whip up over 4,000 entrees a day. In the sweets department, Karsten's pastry chef, Cesar Valiente, relies on a staff of 10 to help him with the 5,500 desserts he creates per day. During the night, three chefs prepare the desserts, while the day staff takes care of finishing, garnishing, and plating. And it takes heaps of ingredients to make these desserts. Cesar's staff use up to 50 pounds of whipped cream, 200 pounds of sugar, 70 pounds of butter, and 90 dozen eggs every day, all to create these scrumptious cakes, cookies, pies, and pastries. All these ingredients are stored in the provisions area, two decks below the galleys. This deck also serves as storage for all the perishables on board, like fruit, pasta, and seafood. It's also where all the meat is cleaned and prepped each day. On this ship, the passenger is king, so before any item on the menu is served up, the executive chef puts his recipe to the test. Great. Oh, it's so spicy, huh? If you realize it's not, not the way you, you would like to have it, of course, you, you make it change immediately and you tell the guys what you would like to have changed. Add some more potatoes and we got uh, this the spice out of it. No matter what their nationality, there is one sound every chef likes to hear. Mm. My favorite sound. After a satisfying lunch, it's time to work off the calories. And what better way to do that than by exploring Skagway, Radiance of the Sea's second stop and Alaska's city of fun. George, put your arm in here. Up and in, that's all you need to remember. <laughs> Over 100,000 gold crazed prospectors pass through these parts. Once the gateway to the Yukon, Skagway is a town rich in history, and residents work hard at keeping the memories alive. First off, passengers hit one of the city's most popular sites, the Red Onion Saloon. This ain't your average bar. Come on up, boys. I'm ready for you. Built in 1897, the Red Onion was Skagway's most exclusive bordello with the second floor of the house divided into 10 working cribs. This is a crib that we left intact. So this would have been the girl's room. This is the size of the bed frame she was sleeping on and working on. That's possibly why they call this her crib. Not much larger than a baby's bed. Skagway's famous saloon is a sight to behold. But Alaska City of Fun has much more under its belt. So after a souvenir snapshot with the madam, it's time to take to the skies and live out a true Alaskan adventure. Now, if you look way out in front of us, just beyond those beautiful clouds out there, you might see some mountain peaks sticking up with snow on them. Those are the Chilkat Mountains. Everything that you see that's white or dirty white is snow. And everything out here that you see that has blue color to it is glacial ice. The helicopter's landing pad is Denver Glacier the site of a summer dog sledding camp where passengers get a crash course in mushing or dog sledding. This is a true little Alaska adventure here. It's a northern Alaskan tradition that dates back thousands of years. <laughs> 200 sled dogs make up the camp. They are Alaskan Huskies. Alaskan Huskies are a mixed breed. They're not a purebred dog. Things like Hound and Pointer, Setters, uh, Salukis have been bred into these dogs trying to get a faster, uh, tougher dog, more endurance, better feet, better coat, lots of different characteristics that mushers want. Who wants to go? These dogs are raring to go, but before passengers hop on for a ride, they get a few tips from the expert. Um, the big thing is you don't want to catch up to me. Yeah. If this line gets slack, go ahead and break a little bit, make it tight. 
and they're off. Jed, all right, boys. Jed, that's enough, Jed. Musher George Meyer knows all the tricks to keeping these dogs on the right track. Ha, ha, ha. Good boy, Sammy. Good girl, Luz. You hear me saying ha a lot. I want him to go left if I say ha. Oh, I want him to go right, I say G. No, Sam, G, G. Good boy, Sam. Good girl, Luz. Oops, Lucy's legs over. Good girl, Lucy. Good boy, Sammy. It becomes second nature when I'm on the sled. Even when I'm talking to people <laughs> or any situation, I'm always watching the dogs. I'm watching every single dog all the time. Bend your knees and just ride it down. <laughs> good girl, Lucy. Good boy, Sammy. Hold on, hold on. Good job. The one-hour excursion ends back at camp where passengers say their goodbyes to the pups and pooches. But back on board, plenty of fun is guaranteed at the ship's Casino Royale. The casino's got it all. Blackjack, craps, and more than 200 slot machines. Although slots can be a lucrative venture, the tables are a great place to test a gambler's skill. One of the most popular games on this ship is craps. But for novice gamblers, it's also the most intimidating. All right, shooter, 7 11. 43, go on, 7. People get intimidated by this game because there's a lot of people shouting, there's lots going on. But it's really not as hard as people think it is. A craps table can get rowdy because there are a lot of ways to win. You can bet on any number at any time. Right, so you have me on what? On the 4, the 6? 10. Shoot a 10, shooter. 12 and 2 are the hardest to roll, but they pay the most. So the easiest numbers to roll don't pay as well as the ones that are harder to roll. No money, right there. While players test their luck, it's the job of casino manager Andrew Backhouse to oversee the dozens of dealers, hundreds of gamblers, and thousands of dollars that move around the floor each day. And being a casino manager does have its ups and downs. I'm on call all the time. Basically, if there's ever a problem in the casino, I have my phone in my pocket and they've got me straight away, you know, I can't get away from it. But Andrew isn't the only one keeping his ears and eyes peeled. Besides dozens of security guards, dealers and pit bosses, 60 surveillance cameras scan the casino floor at all times in search of foul play. If I've got somebody I'm having a look at, then uh, I can actually zoom into the table. Say, for instance, we're on this blackjack table here, we can move this around. We want to focus in on somebody specific. But the one thing security can't control is the luck of the dice. Yeah. Yeah. And whether it's the food on board or the sights on land, on this Alaskan adventure, it's hard not to feel like you've hit the jackpot. Yeah. It's full speed ahead as Radiance of the Seas cruises along Alaska's inside passage. As the ship sails farther north, the days are becoming longer and longer. In the summer months, daylight can last up to 20 hours here in southeast Alaska. But that doesn't mean there's no nightlife on board this luxury liner. Here in the ship's disco, cruisers can party until the break of dawn. And on disco night, Cruise director Gordon Watman takes center stage and loosens up the crowd with a few hip moves. He also takes the time to teach a 70s favorite, the hustle. And you're going to click your heels together, and you're going to say, click, click. During the day, Gordon also fills up the endless hours of daylight with non-stop fun. Every week, he hosts over 50 activities. From murder mystery dinners to casino games, this guy keeps cruisers entertained round the clock. The loudest table was... I like to socialize as much as I can. I'm always walking around, speaking to the guests. They love the personal service. That's what it's all about on a cruise ship. From the service to the structure of the ship itself, Radiance of the Seas is designed to please. To house all its inhabitants, the ship's four upper decks are lined with 1,050 staterooms. 800 of them boast an ocean view, the highest percentage of outside staterooms in the Royal Caribbean fleet. And for the ultimate in luxury, the Royal Suite wins the gold. Inside this 1,034 square foot mecca of opulence, you'll find a personal bar, 
a baby grand, big screen TV, a dining room, living room, and a stunning marble bathroom. The price tag for a week-long stay? It's equivalent to the cost of a diamond-studded Rolex. But whether you're cruising in style or keeping it simple, you'll always be treated like royalty. Representing over 50 nations, the 846 crew members are trained to deliver top-notch service in any language you wish. Bonjour, mes amis. Everything I remark. On Radiance of the Seas, 67 attendants work day and night to keep all the staterooms spick and span. What people might not know is that we are up before 8 a.m. because we have to make, take care of everything. We have to take care of our towels, our trolleys, our sheets. Everything has to be there before we start at 8. And there's an army of workers below deck to assist them. 14 laundry attendants are in charge of washing, drying, ironing and folding over 2,500 sets of sheets and pillowcases every day. When it comes to taking out the trash, this vessel's four garbage collectors are always at the ship's disposal. We burn approximately 10 cubic meters of shredded garbage every day. Paper, uh, soft plastic, plastic bags, all that kind of stuff. In one week, Crew members recycle three to four tons of glass, 660 pounds of aluminum cans, and over 1,000 pounds of scrap metal. All garbage that can be burned is stored and kept in a 39 degree cold room to keep the odor down. We have the cold garbage room, and this is basically accumulation of one week. When the ship returns to home port, it will be disposed of. As the crew down below conquers comfort and cleanliness. Above deck, the guest relations manager sorts out passengers' problems. You lost your key? Okay. Uh, well, let's make you a new one. We handle all of the banking, selling stamps, assisting people with some of the challenges they might have on board. Almost everything that a hotel a front desk does, we do here as well. Brent Hunter deals with hundreds of passengers a day and answers all types of questions. People often ask us how the toilets flush, how the lights work. They're amazed that everything you have in your own home, you have here plus more. Hello, can I help you? Uh, a pair of pliers. A pair of pliers? We don't, but we can try and get one for you. Whatever the request, Brent is there to satisfy it. And as Radiance of the Seas sails on toward her next port of call, all the ship staff continue their efforts behind the scenes to sustain this mobile city at sea in style. It's day five on our Alaskan cruise aboard the Radiance of the Seas. And as the ship enters Yakutat Bay, passengers flock to the decks for a look at one of Alaska's most spectacular natural wonders, Hubbard Glacier. Hubbard Glacier goes back about 60 miles, starts up near Mount Logan, 19,000 feet high, the highest mountain of Canada, flows down here to the ocean, 60 miles down, and at the face, it's about eight miles wide. Big piece on the port bow, two meters away, two meters away. As Radiance of the Seas makes her way through the water, it's up to the staff captain, or second in command, to keep an eye on nearby packs of ice. It's his job to help the captain steer clear of danger. This is a window so we can see over the side of the ship what's going on underneath. We don't want them to get too close to the ship, otherwise they might make a dent or a hole. 10 meters. Increasing. Increasing. The bay is filled with icebergs, so the captain aborts any effort to get close. A big piece like that one over there, we can't get anywhere close to because uh, it will make a dent in the ship. The smaller pieces, though, we can push away gently and make a way through the ice. As the staff captain keeps watch, passengers admire the glacier from afar. It's a little bit cold, <laughs> but it's been, uh, it's been magnificent. Yeah. I mean, we've taken about nine rolls of film so far. <laughs> On any Alaskan cruise, passengers will brave the cold and rain to catch a glimpse of the sights. And while rough seas might keep passengers inside on some ships, it won't happen here. Radiance of the Seas is cleverly designed with state-of-the-art stabilizers that reduce the side-to-side -side sway of the vessel. This way, passengers can stay on deck without feeling the motion of the ocean. 
But if you still can't find your sea legs, this liner's medical facility has just what you're looking for. Down on deck two, there's a staff of two doctors and three nurses available 24-7 to administer to any ailment, including seasickness. We had basically all the medication that is necessary in cases of ACLS for advanced cardiac life support, hypertension, infections, uh, any injuries. Uh, so we had all the, all the stuff necessary. And for those who just can't shake that queasy feeling, this antihistamine injection will do the trick in less than 10 minutes. And you will be fine. But if you're scared of needles, here's a secret remedy. Book a room on a lower deck near the center of the ship. The closer you are to sea level and to the ship's axis, the less chance you have of feeling the sway of the ocean. When it comes to health, Radiance of the Seas has got you covered. But when the ship needs a checkup, the man to call is Information Technology Manager, Trevor Schmidt. I'm the IT Operations Manager on board, responsible for all computer equipment and communication on board the ship. This big black box over here is the master computer on board the ship, and uh, all the revenue systems come to here. 35 computers oversee all the ship's operations, from navigation up on the bridge to purchases at the ship's five shops. It can be fairly pressurized at times because if, say, one of these servers go down, it's a loss of revenue. So really important that the uptime of all the equipment in here is 100%, 24-7, 365 days a year. As Trevor and his team keep the information flowing, the captain navigates Radiance of the Seas into her third port of call, Ketchikan. Ketchikan is a logging and fishing community with a heaping dose of Native American culture and the largest collection of totem poles in the United States. At Totem Bight State Park, you'll find 15 reproduced poles that tell the tales of the local Tlingit and Haida Indians. Because these tribes had no written language, totem poles were their storybooks. The taller the pole was, the more intricate the story. How are you today? Fine. Good. Welcome to the rainforest. There you go. But if it's action you're after, the Great Alaskan Lumberjack Show is sure to hit the mark. We've got all the events that you're going to see on, on you know, ESPN or the Outdoor Life Network with the chopping and the sawing and the log rolling and the pole coming. We cover all, everything. Let's get these men going up here, folks. Help them out. Each year, five lumberjacks from the U.S. and Canada come here to show off their talents to thousands of admiring fans. Go! During the hour-long show, two lumberjack teams battle it out in over ten events. A crowd favorite is the tree climbing. When you get to the top, the fun starts because it's the fastest guy down that usually wins the contest. He hits, they're on their way back down, oh my gosh! Look at this! Experience is key in this competition, especially if you want to stay dry. The secret is to know where your body is all the time. You gotta keep your eyes on your opponent's feet. You gotta be ready for that log to spin forward or backward at any moment. One slip up and you could hurt a lot more than your lumberjack ego. Oh! Oh my gosh! All day, lumberjacks roll, saw, chop, and climb. But the one prize everyone's after is the title of Bull of the Woods. This time, it goes to the Spruce Mill Lumberjacks team. As the Lumberjack show comes to an end, cruisers leave Ketchikan tradition behind and head back to their high-tech liner. And as the ship makes her way back to her home port after this seven-day adventure, All right, here we go, guys. Hey, guys. cruisers can rely on the staff photographer to keep the memories alive. There we go. Bye -bye. Hey, uh, that's excellent. Very good. Royal Caribbean's cruise ship delivers many of the sights Alaska is famous for. But if it's a taste of Alaska's interior you're after, then you can hop aboard the newest and tallest glass dome train cars in the world, Royal Caribbean's Wilderness Express. These two luxury rail cars are hooked up and pulled by the Alaska Railroad. Roughly 20 cars make up the train system. 
for passengers, it's an amazing way to cruise Alaska by land. The train departs from the depot in Anchorage, Alaska. But before passengers can begin their journey into the interior, the maintenance crew must make sure all systems are running smoothly. We have to do certain uh, inspections and tests. Uh, we wash the train, prep it, and we have a daily checklist that we have to go through. From the pistons to the brakes, nothing is left to chance. We want to make sure that everything is in place and intact. Uh, we don't have any leaking shocks. On board, the 12-person staff preps for the arrival of 160 passengers, and the host guides clear their throats. Okay. Testing one, two, three, testing. For the duration of this trip, they will answer questions and guide passengers through the great Alaskan wilderness. With all systems a go, the Wilderness Express heads up the track to the passenger pickup point. All aboard! Fifteen minutes later, the train pulls out of Anchorage and begins its trek up north. The Wilderness Express travels on a 351-mile journey between Anchorage and Fairbanks each day, allowing guests to stop and visit destinations like Talkeetna and Denali National Park along the way. Track warrant 732 is okay at 1227, 1227 hours, TCP over. The conductor and the engineer work together to keep the train on track. While the engineer worries about driving the train, the conductor stays in communication with the dispatcher to ensure the rails are clear at all times. Somebody else has the portion of track right now that we're looking for. So they have to get in the clear and give up that portion of track before we can get that track. And that's what keeps us uh, from running into each other. While crew members keep their eyes on the rails, passengers take in the scenery. Every turn of the track offers a spectacular photo opportunity. But it's the wildlife everyone's come for, and so far, no sightings. The only thing we want to see is we want to see more bear, more, more eagles, and more of all the wildlife. We don't get much wildlife down there in downtown Boston. The first stop aboard the Wilderness Express is beautiful downtown Talkeetna. This small town has a winter population of just 100. Time ticks a little slower here and all the residents take things in stride. But when summer comes around, the town's popularity rises as fast as the temperature. This is where hundreds of climbers flock to ascend North America's tallest mountain, Mount McKinley. But passengers who want to expand their horizons without working up a sweat can climb on this little six-seater for an unforgettable flight above Talkeetna's mountains and glaciers. This whopping block of ice is the Kinnick Glacier. This monolith is 28 miles long, 6 miles wide, and more than 1,000 feet thick. It's marvelous, marvelous country. And it just goes on and on and on. As passengers soon see, much of Kinnick Glacier is blue. That's because ice reflects all the colors of the spectrum except the color blue. After enjoying the scenery from up high, back on the Wilderness Express, it's time to chow down. On board this high-tech train, the food is as spectacular as the scenery, but preparing meals in a moving wagon could make any chef nervous. The biggest challenge in this car is, is working with the, uh, the rock of the train. Well, if the train's leaning one, turning one way, everything tends to kind of fly, so you gotta open the door and grab real quick. After lunch, it's time to head into Denali National Park. The tour buses for Royal Caribbean passengers are one of the best ways to view the vast wilderness of Denali. 
To protect its six million acres of untamed habitat, no recreational vehicles are allowed. It's six million acres in order to protect an entire intact subarctic ecosystem. Very rare in the world today. Not one species has been eradicated, nor have there been any introductions of non-native species. It's pretty special. And visitors get what they came for. Just 15 feet away from the park road stands a real live moose with her two calves. They're only one month old, but that makes them old enough to outrun a grizzly. And in these parts, that's good news. She is doing real well to have both her calves still with her. There's a high calf mortality rate here in the park where there are predators like wolves and grizzlies. On this trip, you're bound to bump into caribou. In Alaska, there are more than a million of them. That's twice as much as the state's human population. Although both the males and females grow antlers, it's easy to tell who's who. The gargantuan size antlers are reserved for the males. Up ahead, it looks like another bus has spotted something wild. Passengers hope for a grizzly, but it's a wolf, finishing his lunch, an even rarer sighting in Denali. There are only 90 wolves in this park, and each pack claims 600 miles worth of territory. So this sighting's an incredible stroke of luck. To see wildlife here in Denali, you need to be active, attentive spotters, keeping up a constant search, but really there's no substitute for dumb luck, just being at the right spot at the right time. As an early morning drizzle descends on Denali, passengers can still make out a herd of doll sheep perched high on nearby cliffs. Then, suddenly, a 400-pound brown-haired grizzly appears. Followed by her six-month-old cub, and right now, the cub is right next to the mom. The cub does stay pretty close to her. And notice they are up on the hillside, you know, away from the dangers of the lowlands. Clay has seen her before. She did have two earlier this year, and she's lost one. And that's par for the course, actually. About 50% of grizzly cubs don't make it. In just three hours in the park, these very lucky passengers have seen the big five inhabitants of Denali. For some, it's a fitting ending to this railway journey, but others may end their trip back in Anchorage or choose to continue on to Fairbanks before catching a flight bound for home. From the glass dome windows of the Wilderness Express to the decks of the Radiance of the Seas, these vessels supply passengers with a spectacular way to cruise Alaska by sea or by land with all the comforts of home. And they provide an awe-inspiring adventure into one of the world's last frontiers.